Hi, I am Gary Marie T. Hibbert. Shelly and I want to thank you for joining us for our Faith is Our Victory in Our Ministries live stream of today's message. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel or like us on our Facebook page so you don't miss any of our messages that can change your life. These links can be found on our website at fiovn.org. Now watch, listen, be inspired as you increase in faith for all things are possible to those who believe. Good evening, good evening, wow. Let me ask you a question. How many of you would like to know the key to overcome every evil in this world? <laughs> of course, even me. I'm putting up my hands too, right? I've been meditating on the scripture. It's in 1 John 5, verse 4 and 5. Here's what the word of God says. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. We'll pause there for a moment. If you're born again, that means the Spirit of God, you made a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life. That means he lives inside of you. And now the Spirit of God is powerful. He said, if you're born again, if you have made him Lord of your life, you can overcome the world, everything that's in this world. That means if you're not born again, you will not be able to overcome what's going on in the world. People that are not born again, who are just living their life and thinking, I'm just having a good time, the world will overcome them. They will not overcome the world. But here's the good news. You are born again. Are you born again? Let me see your hands. You will overcome this world. And it goes on to say, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So it doesn't just stop there. There are the many things to overcome in the world. You've got to be born again. If you're not born again, forget it. You're never going to overcome the world. The world will run you over. But because you're born again, you overcome. Say, this is the victory. What's this victory? Even our faith. What is that faith? What you believe what God says in his word. Whatever God says, if you believe it, you will overcome the world. And then it goes on to verse 5 and it says, But he, but is, but who is he, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Then we win. We cannot be defeated. It doesn't matter what we're facing. It doesn't matter how the enemy comes in. Like a flood, he will lift up his standard against the enemy. You know what that standard is? Faith in us. We lift up that standard. Our faith in God will cause us to overcome the world. We have every reason to win. So I want to encourage you, those of you online, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know the battle. You can look good on the outside. But there's a raging battle going on inside of your mind. Questioning a lot of things. Not sure even about the things that you have read in the Bible anymore. But I want you to know, if you will believe God's word, even though there's a war going on in your mind, if you will believe his word, you will overcome. You'll overcome the doubt. You'll overcome the fear. You'll overcome all the questions that you have, that things doesn't seem to be working. Or the question about God, question about the things that you have read and you're not seeing manifestation. You will overcome if you believe in what God says. Those things will have to be pushed back. And that's what the word of God will do. Please stand. I'm encouraging you guys, we win. We win because we are born again. That means when you're born again, you don't live the way you used to live. When I gave my life to the Lord, I no longer want to party. I don't want to have sex. I don't want to drink. I really didn't drink, but I definitely did not want to drink. And the partying, that was gone. You know, I love reggae music, so I danced to it a lot, even in the church. I was dancing to my reggae music all the time, Christian, and the Lord checked me and said, you're dancing to Christian reggae music, but it's what's internally going on inside of you. You're dancing to it, but there's still an element of worldliness. And I was instant delivered. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit. He will shed things 
in your life that is not of God. Everybody thinks, oh, you can dance, girl, you're good. But again, I loved it so much that I was still connected to a worldly way of thinking, but I just did it to a Christian music. I don't want to do that. I want my body to belong to God. I want my spirit to worship him. I want my heart to give him everything. And finally, that was the last thing that had to go. It's broken. And I am free in Jesus' name. And that's some many years ago, but I am free. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you that we are born again. And we overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Our faith in what your word has already written. We believe your word, almighty God. And because we believe it, we overcome the world. And we believe that Jesus is the son of God. We have overcome the world. So we give you praise and thanks for what you have done for us, that we win, we are victorious. We have been given all that we need to walk in this world free of sin, and we can now exercise dominion over sin and live for you and honor you in everything that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. So go up and worship thinking about what I just shared with you. First John chapter 5, 4 and 5. Remember, go meditate on it and tell yourself you are born again. Tell yourself that you have faith in God's word. Tell yourself that you believe that Jesus is the son of God. You cannot be defeated. Hallelujah. Let us all stand as we magnify the God of miracles. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise. Come put you. Can we start that again, please? I need it louder. I need it louder. Can we start it louder, louder, louder? I don't know what happened. Okay, start it from the beginning. Hallelujah, Lord. Pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the God of miracles. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the God of miracles. Serve a miracle working God. There is nothing too hard for Him. When He speaks, He works signs and wonders. We serve a miracle working God. We serve a miracle working God. There is nothing too hard for Him. When He speaks, He works signs and wonders. We serve a miracle working God. We serve a miracle working God. There is nothing too hard for him. When he speaks, he works signs and wonders. We serve a miracle working God. We serve a miracle working God. There is nothing too hard for him. When he speaks, he works signs and wonders. We serve a miracle working God. The God we serve is a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He will never fail. Is a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He will never fail. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the God of miracles. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the God of is a miracle working God. He's a miracle working 
God. He will never fail. The God we serve is a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He will never fail. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the God of miracles. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the God of miracles. We serve a miracle working God. There is nothing too hard for him. When he speaks, he works signs and wonders. We serve a miracle working God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the God of miracles. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the God of miracles. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. We serve a miracle working God. He's a God of miracles. That's what he does, and we need to believe him for the miracles and the manifestation of his power in our lives. Just bring it up just a little bit. Mighty God, I bless your name. Holy One, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Age to age, age to age, you're still the same in all creation. Who shout your name? You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. For who you are, I bless your name. For who you are, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. For who you are, I bless your name. For who you are, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Let's give him a wave offering, hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. We magnify your God. Hallelujah, you're the mighty God. Mighty God, I bless your name. Holy One. I worship you, you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Oh, age to age, age to age, you're still the same. In all creation, who shout your name, you are God all by you are God all by yourself. Oh, for who you are, for who you are, 
I bless your name for who you are. I worship you. You are God all by yourself. Oh, 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 oh. You are God all by yourself. Oh, yes, you are a For who you are, oh, oh. I bless your name. For who you are, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Oh, for who you are. For who you are. Oh, oh. I bless your name. For who you are. I worship you. You are God all by yourself. Oh, 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 oh. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Oh, 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 oh. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Lord, we magnify you. We exalt you, O King. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We exalt you, King of Kings. For you are God and God alone. You are the mighty God, the holy God, the living one. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we give you all our praise. We give you all our praise. We give you all our praise. Oh, we give you all our praise, Lord. Father, we exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. Because you're worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy to be glorified. And we exalt you. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you. Thank you, mighty God. Praise you. We do bless your name, Jesus. Thank you for your word. It's so precious. That word that is able to change us from the inside out. All honor and praise and glory to you. In Jesus name, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. I just want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you that are here. Welcome, welcome. It's good to see your beautiful face. Those of you who are online, welcome, welcome. I wish I could see your face, <laughs> but I can't, but I know you're out there. And those of you who will listen later, we welcome you. And again, we want to encourage you, if you haven't made that decision, to leave your home and come into the building. You need to. It's so different. Online was just something that happened because of COVID, but it's not God's best. It's not even his will. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of yourself together. There's something about when we come together as a church. You know, I can't lay hands on you if you're online, but I can in person. You know, there are a lot of things that you just can't do if you're online. So I want to encourage you to make the decision to just break that shackle. Remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So whatever is holding you back, don't give power to it. The greater one lives inside of you. We want to see you guys. Amen. Hallelujah. Hi, I'm Gary Moriti Hibbert. Shelly and I are happy to have you join us at our faith seminar. 
where all things are possible to those who believe. This is why it's important for you to join us weekly at our Sunday morning and Tuesday evening meeting. For believing comes by hearing the Word of God. The Word of God says we are to serve each other by love. As we serve each other, we are showing God's love. So please visit FIOVN.org and click on Get Involved to be a part of making our vision a reality so all may believe. Again, go to FIOVN.org, send us an email, let us know you are with us today, how we can help you, and how the meeting today impacted your life. Remember, we are here for you. All right, let's go straight into our announcement. Welcome everyone to Faith is Our Victory Now Ministries, a place of hope so all may believe, 1 Timothy 2.5. We are located at 127 Sunrise Avenue, Unit 4 in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Our senior pastors are Gary Mowaiti Hibbert and his lovely wife, Shelley Hibbert. Every Sunday, we encourage you to join us live or online for our faith seminars where you will learn that through faith, you can make the impossible possible. To find out the times of our seminars, please go to FIOVN.org. When attending any of our meetings, please turn off your cell phone or set it to silent mode so it does not interrupt the service. Washrooms are located to the left once you exit the auditorium. We welcome you to join us for our daily prayer gatherings, as well as our Growing in Faith Bible study every Tuesday evening, plus our three days of prayer and fasting. Please visit FIOVN.org for more information regarding the times and locations. Want to make a difference in the lives of seniors and physically challenged individuals who are in need of food assistance in the O'Connor Toronto housing community? Well, if so, then assisting with our food drive is just for you. Volunteers are needed to help pack groceries and deliver food to the O'Connor community. When and how can you help? Once again, we encourage you to visit FIOVN.org for more information so you can start making a difference. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Faith is Our Victory Now, as well as follow and like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. All these links can be found on FIOVN.org so that we can help you to stay inspired, stay informed, and stay in faith. Thank you. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. I want to remind you guys that on Sunday we have our love feast, pastor the appreciation, but I'm excited about the love feast because that's the time when we get to just sit back relax and enjoy each other's company. And I want to remind you guys, I, I'll bring Lorraine up to speak about um, pastor's appreciation, but the love feast, listen guys, we are catering this event. Those of you who are online, you give your word to be here, you need to be here. Because if you are not here, I we have paid as a church for every single individual. And if you don't show up, that's just like, you know, we paid for food that we didn't need to. So you need to be a people of integrity. Keep your word. If you get up and you're not feeling good because you just feel sad, speak to it and command yourself to get out. Because, again, we want to be very wise, be good steward of God's money. And a lot of times when people get invited out, they just don't show up. Well, money has been put out for that. So I'm asking you, please keep that commitment be a person of integrity and those of you who are still in touch with your your um, life group or your reach group let them know i expect everyone to be out we're looking at about 74 people could be a little bit more and that's all from our ministry and you'd wonder most of them anyway i think there may be like five people that are not um and we wonder where are you on sunday all these people go to the ministry people get tired complacent get online don't get online that's not god you don't want to just be a body you need to be here and present so i wanted to make a note of that that for me that is very important i'm a person that keeps my word even when i am tired i will make sure if i say i'm gonna call if i can't do it i'm gonna text and says hey guys i'm, I'm really tired i can't do it 
but keep your word. Very, very important. Um, the other thing is, well, the tickets are going really well. Maybe, maybe I have about maybe five or eight. And I say eight because I'm iffy about some individuals. <laughs> so there's still a bit of room. But knowing me, I am pushing to the end. You know, doing this event, I do it as, as if it was my own event. Freedom for all people, I give 100%. I give 100%. I'm up late at night asking Holy Spirit to give me marketing skill. And he does. He deposits things in my spirit and says, I want you to send these out to the people in your contact. And you know what? People respond and things are good. And what do I mean by that? If they're not able to come, they will send donation. So I give 100%. Why would I do that? Because no human being should suffer in this world. It's wrong. It's not God's will. He died that they would never suffer. And the people of India, it will be somewhere else. It could be Haiti. Wherever the Lord opened the door, I can only help those who come before me. I can't help the whole world. But because India has come before us as a ministry, we are given 100%. I gain nothing from this. There's nothing that I get from this. All I get is the joy to see that we can give them a place where they can be safe and that they can worship their God and not have to be afraid of somebody trying to destroy their life. And so if you know anybody that may still need tickets, call them up. Let them know. If they say we can't come out after donation, don't be afraid. It's a good cause. It's, I'm not different than any one of you. The same God that lives in me lives inside of you. It's all a decision that we make. When we hear there's pain out there, we, get, we rise up and we be a part of the solution and not the problem. We, we make sure people get safe place. We make sure people are brought in and they're delivered from whatever they're dealing with. And so I'm asking you guys, you have lots of friends. The more money we get, the better because really, if they rent, they may get kicked out again. But we can't not give them something to do that. What is the best is that they could obtain a property. When you have your own, who can come in there and tell you what to do? No one can. That doesn't mean they're not exempt from persecution. But we want to do, I'm praying God that we raise, and we will let you know. At the end of the dinner, we will have exactly how much money was raised for this event. So you'll get to be a part of what happened by seeing because you participated, all right? So thank you for listening. Um, I think this is it, maybe on Sunday one more time, and then we are ready for the 29th. Thank you, Pastor Shelley. So just a reminder, as Pastor Shelley mentioned earlier, we do have pastor's appreciation celebration on Sunday. And for our part as the, the, the spiritual children that God has committed to Apostle Gary and Pastor Shelley, pastor's appreciation is the one time of the year that's set apart that we can sow into their lives financially that we don't just express our gratitude with our words, but we can also give up our substance tangibly. Because, you know, they say action speaks louder than words. It's the truth. Because even God didn't just give us his word. He backed it up with his actions. And so just go before the Lord if you have not already done so and ask the Lord, how much can I give? How much should I give? And whatever God tells you to give, give it. Because, you know, if he tells you to give like a big amount, whatever he tells you to give, then he obligates himself to ensure it comes into your hand. And when God brings it into your hands, don't go use it on something else. Remember the purpose why he gave it to you. Get a card, write it up, bring it out for this Sunday. We will have the email address on Sunday but in case you even want to go ahead early I will repeat it so the email address that we will be that will be used for our financial gifts that we're sowing to Apostle Gary and Pastor Shelley is M W E N T I N the number eight at gmail.com so one more time that's M W E N T I N 
the number eight at gmail.com. And that's where we, we would, if you're doing e-transfer, you can e-transfer your gift. And in the message section, just put PA, short for Pastor's Appreciation. So looking forward to seeing all of you on Sunday as we celebrate and give God thanks for giving us pastors after his own heart. Amen. Now let's welcome Apostle Gary. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Just bring down the music a bit, please. Hallelujah. God is a good God. He's an awesome God. And there is none like him in all of the earth. And we give him all the praise. Um, we, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings right now. And, and just a reminder that the purpose of our tithes and offering it is to empower us so that we can make a place of hope a reality that's what faith is our victory in our ministries is supposed to be a place of hope where or a place of refuge where uh where people can come and 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 flee uh, abuse, flee homelessness uh, when they come out of prison so that they have a place where they can go to. That's what God desires uh, for us to be. Jesus said, I was naked and you clothed me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty. You gave me drink. I was in prison. You, you visited me. I was sick and you ministered to me. That's what a place of hope is. That's what a reality, and that's what your tithes and offerings are enabling us to do. Your tithes and offerings uh, enable us to, to give groceries in the community um, every, uh, every month, and, and, and we need to build from there. We need to have our own property, our own place, that we can be what Jesus said that we are to be. Amen? Uh, do you have any, anyone need an offering envelope? Just raise your hand. Um, and for those, again, for each transfer is so all may believe at FIOVN.org. Uh, go ahead and. Jesus said, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Now let us inquire of the Holy Spirit how much we should give as an offering, if you have not done so already. Please confess with me. Lord, I acknowledge you as the one who gives me money to give. So Holy Spirit, I receive your direction as to how much money I should give as an offering. Now listen to the Holy Spirit, and whatever he tells you to give, please do it. I will give you a few seconds to listen to the Holy Spirit. We want to thank all of our hope partners for helping Faith is Our Victory Now Ministries implement our vision so all may believe, as we are helping oppressed people everywhere. Those of you who are joining us for the first time, please pray about becoming a Hope Partner. A Hope Partner is an individual who has made a commitment to tithe and give offerings of support to Faith is Our Victory Now Ministries monthly. Please remember our Community Food Assistance Offering, which is dedicated to providing food assistance to seniors and physically challenged individuals in the Toronto housing community. For those giving to the Community Food Assistance Offering, write CFA on the offering envelope or in the message section for your e-transfers. Please send all e-transfers to So All May Believe at FIOVN.org. Let us get ready to confess together the blessing declaration over our tithes and offerings. Lord, you have blessed me, and I'm thankful for the money that I have received from my labor and from others. 
because it is you who supplied all my need according to your riches and glory by the anointed one, Jesus. I have brought your tithe, 10% of all I have earned. I have not eaten of it, I have not left it at home, but I have offered it. I have brought to you your tithe and the offering you have instructed me to give in thanksgiving. Therefore, Father, you have caused all grace to abound to me, so that in every situation, I always have the perfect condition of life in which I have no need of aid or support. And I have more than enough money to give to those who have need and for the sharing of the good news. I thank you for multiplying the money that I give and have given and increasing the fruits of my righteousness. I give according to what I have desired to give from my heart, not sparingly, but towards blessings not out of sorrow or out of necessity, for you love a cheerful giver. Father, I thank you that I've received a debt-free home, the ability to manage my finances with wisdom, an exceeding abundant return on the finances I give and have given, household salvation, freedom from all debt, freedom from all sickness and disease, peace in every situation and relationship, favor, in every situation and relationship. Now go ahead and name those things that you believe you have received from the Lord in Jesus' name. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I just want to remind you that we are in three days of fasting and prayer, and... Uh, we normally do it the second, uh, after the second Sunday of the month, but uh, to be honest with you, uh, because of Thanksgiving and also because of my anniversary, I didn't want to be fasting during my anniversary. <laughs> so I pushed it to the third week, and um, I truly believe that there's something about that the revelation, God has given us a revelation that we need to fast three days every month. Now, you may not all do it the way I do it, which is a water only uh, fast. You may have to adjust your fast based on your situation. But God wants a people that's willing. Now, some of you can't do it because of medical reasons, but God wants a fasting people. Uh, Jesus said that this type of demon does not come out except by prayer and fasting. They're stubborn demons. They're demons that are really stubborn. All right? And, and that's why the, the disciples could not cast out the demon. And, but the Jesus said, he says, how long, is this, how long has he been doing this? He's been doing it since his youth. That means that demon's been oppressing that young boy for a long time. And I realized based on my experience that when a spirit has been tormenting someone for a while, it, they, they don't want to leave. But how many of you know they have to leave? Yes. And sometimes it takes, I don't know what happens, I don't fully comprehend what happens in the spirit world when we do fast, but sometimes it takes us denying ourselves food and, and, and pleasurable drink. And it, 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 it said, this is the fast I've chosen to break the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, set the captive free. So if it means going three days without food and without juice and things like that and just water, for God to, to be able to move through us to set the captive free, so be it. Uh, the flesh needs to be denied. And, uh, and, and we need to deny the flesh and 
um, it's not always easy the flesh doesn't want the fresh one food and you also you notice when you go on a fast food you don't want even like start to smell good <laughs> but we have to deny the flesh and we're here in the morning at 5 a.m. praying and uh, I'm also fasting as well for some personal reasons as well and uh, I believe that as we do fast corporately, that there are things happening in the spirit world to bring about the things that we want and what we desire. Also, I encourage you, uh, the, uh, the, we, uh, we have a concept, each one reach one. And because Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the good news to every person. So I encourage you uh, concerning you can be healed love which the Bible says love your neighbor as you love yourself and we need to love our neighbor and how we show our love for our neighbor is that we need to bring our neighbor our family our friends our co-workers to be healed on a Tuesday or on a Sunday uh, there's so many hurting people out there so many sick people and we need to bring the sick people in. And you bring them in, make, we make a demand on the power of God so that he can demonstrate his love. I want you to know, God heals people not because they deserve it. God heals people because he loves people. That's why God heals people. Not because we deserve to be healed, but because he loves us. And he wants to demonstrate his love for us because the fact that God is able to heal testifies that he's able to forgive sin. So please reach out and bring them on Sunday. Bring them out on Tuesday night so that Jesus can heal them. Jesus said, we sh these signs shall follow those who believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Stand with me and let us confess our faith declaration. Let's, let's, let's declare this boldly together. Because I'm born again, I see the kingdom of God, and I believe I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have, as it is written in the Bible, which I believe is the word of God. I am righteous. I am holy. I am obedient. I am saved from suffering, sickness, fear, anxiety, depression, oppression, sin addictions, poverty, financial struggles, torment, danger, plagues, toxic relationships, loneliness, and the curse of death. I am healed. I am blessed. I am rich. I am kind. I am beautiful. I am excellent. I am compassionate. I am friendly. I am genuine. I am free. I am forgiven. I am loved. I am accepted. I am complete, I am whole, having nothing missing, nothing broken in my spirit, soul, body, finances, and relationships. I am bold, I am a success, I am persistent, I have faith, I have the authority to have what I say. I have love, I have joy, I have peace, I have God, I have the Christ in me, I have power since the Holy Spirit came on me and is in me by Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to get straight into the Word of God uh, today. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We can never, ever get tired of hearing the word of God. There is, is no such thing as, I've heard enough of the word of God. What I've experienced in my life is that if I ever slack off declaring that by his stripes I was healed, all of a sudden I started feeling sick and started getting sick. There isn't a day that I can I go by without declaring that by his stripes I was healed. 
because faith comes by hearing something heard and what I realize if you stop hearing the word then your faith gets weakened for example uh, if, if you're lifting weights and you're building muscles what happens if you've built weights and you, you can bench press 200 pounds and, and you can squat 300 pounds? What happens if you stop exercising? Give yourself six months, touch no weights, do no squats. After those six months, you think you'll be able to bench press those 200 pounds? No. Why? Because you stop using your muscles. And I want you to know that when you stop hearing the word of God, you stop using your faith. You stop strengthening your faith. Each of us in here have the same amount of muscles. But our strength of our muscles is dependent on how much we have exercised those muscles. And that's what you're doing when you come out on a Tuesday night, when you come out on a Sunday, when you go back and listening to the message uh, on, on YouTube, or uh, on the audio, you are strengthening your faith. That's what you're doing. I, 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 I rehearse the word of God. I speak the word of God. And one thing as I was sharing on Sunday is that it's a struggle to try to serve God in your flesh according to your own desire and what you want. It is a struggle. It's for all of us. And I recognize that the, it says the righteous shall live by what? Faith. And we walk by faith and not by what? Sight. And faith requires the word. And that's why I have to confess healing scriptures. I have to confess healing scriptures. I confess prosperity scriptures. I confess protection scriptures. God has told me that there will be those who will seek to take my life. What do I do? I don't sit around waiting for somebody to try to take my life. No. I have to, I have scriptures that of protection. What am I doing? I'm building up my faith in regards to the fact that no one has the right and can take my life. And also, I have sin scriptures that I confess. Pastor, why are you confessing sin scriptures so I don't sin? I confess scriptures that have to do with the fact that, I, that sin has no power over me. Sin has no dominion over me. I am not under control of sin. I declare that I'm born of God so I do not practice sin. And the evil one cannot touch me. I am in the grace and I do not use grace as an opportunity to sin <laughs> because I've been dead to sin I'm declaring I'm telling my heart that I'm dead to sin because I recognize that uh, if I try to live this faith life based on my own ability you're gonna it's a struggle it's 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 a real struggle and we have to recognize that this when Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every what word that proceeds out of the mouth of God that's how we live we live by the word of God and so what I want to talk to you about tonight is how to not be fearful how to not be fearful ask my wife I am not a fearful person it doesn't matter what's happening, I will go to sleep. When Shelly was, when, was really under attack from the asthma that has come against her body, and she was just coughing and, and just struggling, and coughing constantly and struggling. I believe, it, I don't remember if it was 2019, I believe it was 2019, she had to take, go to the hospital, I think like five times, that we, we take her to the hospital, and, and there are times and, and when I had to get up for prayer and, and to leave her and she, she was struggling and, and there are times when the, the thought would come, why don't you check if she's still breathing? 
why don't you check? Or I come back from prayer and say, why don't you go upstairs and check if she's still breathing? Do you know what I do? I purposely don't go upstairs and check. Because if I start doing that, if I give in to that thought, or if I wake up and I don't hear her breathing, and I don't hear any sound, and the thought, well, why don't you just reach over and see if her chest is moving? No, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Why? Because it's not based on faith. It's not based on the word of God. I've declared that Shelly shall not die but live and to declare the works of the Lord. So when I get upstairs, I fully expect her to be breathing so I don't need to check. Fearful thoughts will come. But you've got to recognize 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, God has not given. Notice it's in the past tense. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. You've got to count it. The, 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 that word sound is a disciplined mind. You've got to make your mind disciplined. Notice that fear is a spirit. And you've got to recognize that fear is a spirit. There's no such thing. Now, let me just qualify something. There is caution fear. Caution fear is the fact that if you put your hand in fire, you're going to get burned. That's a caution fear. We Caution fear is okay. Caution fear says there's cars going back and forth at 60 miles or 60 kilometers an hour. Don't step out in the street. That's caution fear. Now, that fear is there so that you don't kill yourself. But even though that fear is there to protect you, you cannot be ruled by that fear. What I mean? The fear of not being birthed from fire is an innate fear of protection. But what if you, 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 a house is on fire and you know that there's a little child in that building? Caution fear says if you go in the house, you could get burned. What do you do? You got to override caution fear and go in the house and get the baby. You see a Caution fear says don't go out in the street when the cars are going fast. But you see a child wander out in the street. See, now you have to override the caution fear to protect lives. In other words, you cannot allow any fear, even the protective fear that, that is there, caution fear, to rule your life. You can't give place to fear. You've got to know the mind of God but you cannot allow fear to rule you. In other words, there's no such thing as good fear. We're not supposed to be led by fear. Fear is not supposed to be govern your life about your children, about your finances, about anything. You cannot give any place to fear. The Bible says, do not be afraid of sudden fear. You've got to understand, Fear is a spirit. And that fear, is that spirit of fear is not from God. It is not from God. And that fear, if you allow it to take control of you, you start to get anxious. You go into worry. You go into fret. And then you go into depression. The ultimate goal for fear is to bring you into depression and for your heart to fail you or for you to take your life. Know that that's the end of fear. Fear comes to cripple you. Fear comes, fear gives the devil place to steal and to kill and to destroy your life. That's what happened to Job. 
Job said, the thing I feared has happened to me, the thing I dreaded has come upon me. Fear gave Satan the right to take uh, Job's health, take his wealth, take his children, take his servants, take his livestock, his property. That's what fear, and therefore you have to refuse to fear. You cannot give place to fear. And if the devil wants me not to do something, don't tell me to be afraid of doing it. Did, did I lose you there? <laughs> because the moment he tells me and makes me afraid of doing it, now I've got to prove that I'm not afraid to do it. Now, and I don't mean I don't do crazy stuff. Uh, listen to me. I am not jumping out of a plane in a parachute. <laughs> Just not doing it. Just not doing it. Well, what if the plane's going down? I'm in the plane. That plane's landing. No plane that I'm in is going to crash. Why? Because God has given his angels a command concerning me to bear me up in their hands lest any harm should come to me. I, I don't need a parachute. Plane's coming down safely. Well, what if the wings are in fire? It don't matter what's on fire. What if it only has one wing? What if it has no wings? I don't care what it doesn't have. It's coming down with me in it safely. That's right. Faith supersedes gravity. Jesus showed that. The, 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 the point I, I want you to understand is this. You cannot give place to fear. And how do you not be fearful? You've got Realize that God cannot lie. You have to settle once and for all, for all times. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. Now notice I did not say God doesn't lie. Can anybody tell me the difference between cannot lie and doesn't lie? Exactly. Doesn't mean they can lie, but they choose not to. But I want you to know that God cannot lie. It's not possible for God to lie. There is absolutely no possibility for God to lie because if God lied, he would not be God because he's the truth. God is the truth. So there is no possibility at all for God to lie. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. God just cannot lie. And if, that's what it says here when we look at Numbers 23, 19. 23, 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie. Because men lie. Nor a son of a of man that he should repent, have to turn back from what he has said. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? You've got to settle that in your heart. If you've been praying for something, believing God for something, and it hasn't manifested, it's not God. You got to settle that it's not, but God is not withholding out on you. There's a revelation that the Lord spoke into my heart that I'll, I'll, I'll develop in a message in a few weeks. But the reality, what God showed me is that anything that he has promised already exists. In the mind of God, you're already healed. By his stripes, you were healed. In the mind of God, you've already been given all things. By, by grace, he has already given you all things. In the mind of God, you are already righteous. In the mind of God, in the eternity of God, it's, the Bible says that the lamb was slain from before the foundation of the earth, before God even created anything. I take it further. I want you to know that bef before you, 
You existed in the mind of God before you were ever born. Before you were ever born, you already existed in the mind of God. God already knew you were going to be a born. And you know, the perfect example of this is that if you ask me my age, and I'd say that I'll, I am 58 years old going on 59. But that's not the truth. Every, most of the time we say our birthday, we're lying. What do I mean by our birthday? Because we start our existence when we manifest in the earth. But is that when you existed? When did you exist? Huh? No, no, no. When you were conceived. I said you existed in the mind of God. But when, but understand, you're, you were in the earth when you were conceived. You were in the earth, but nobody could see you. You existed in the earth realm, but nobody could see you because you were in your mother's womb. In the same way, I want you to know that all the promises of God exist in a womb. And that womb is your heart. In order for a child to be manifested, the, 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 your birthday is not when you existed. Your birthday is the day you manifested. But you were in your mother's womb for nine months. In the same way that the word of God, in order for it to manifest in your life, it's got to be in the womb of your heart. That's why it says, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it. Where? In your heart. In your heart. And that's why we've got to put the word of God where? In our heart. We've got to lay up the word of God in our hearts. What the Lord showed me is this. That in order for his word to manifest in the earth realm, I didn't say exist. I said manifest in the earth realm. It's got to exist in your mouth and in your heart. If the word does not exist in your heart and in your mouth, it will not manifest. A woman can walk around saying, well, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm going to have a child. I'm pregnant. But if there was never a conception, there has to be conception. Even Mary had to have an immaculate conception. Jesus didn't just appear. There had to be conception. And even though Jesus, his birth was predicted from eternity, in order for him to exist or manifest in the earth realm, he had to come through a womb. Understand this, nothing comes into the earth outside of a womb. The only being that came into the earth outside of a physical womb was Adam. He was the only one. And the Holy Spirit just checked me on that. That's not true. You know which, what was the womb of Adam? The earth. The earth was the womb of Adam. That's the womb of Adam. And the woman came out of the womb of a man. That's why she's a womb man. Because she came out of the womb of a man. Now, anything that is in the earth that did not come out of a womb is illegal. That's why demons can be cast out. Demons are illegal in the earth because they never came into the earth through a womb. Jesus would have been illegal in the earth if he came into the earth without a womb. Adam had to come into the earth by a womb. All creatures that are in the earth came out of the womb of the earth. Notice that God created the earth first. Everything came out that is tangible came out of a womb. 
And God is, what God's word will not manifest in life unless it's, it's, it's in the womb of our heart. And that's why you've got to lay up the word of God in your heart. You will not overcome fear. And you've got to, this, this is what you've got to settle in the womb of your heart. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. And if God says, by whose wombs you were healed, then you were healed. If God says that the blessing of the Lord has made you rich, then guess what? You're rich. doesn't matter what your bank account looks like. If God said he has not given you a spirit of fear, guess what? You don't have a spirit of fear. Well, I feel afraid. It got nothing to do with why you feel. I feel sick. It's got nothing to do with how you feel. God, see, I have settled that. I have settled in my heart, in my mind, in my being. God cannot lie. If something is not going the way it's supposed to go, it's not because God lied. If you're going to live by faith, you got to settle that. If you're going to overcome fear, you have to settle that. God cannot lie. Just like if I go to, uh, if I see light in that building across the street and I flick my light switch on and no lights come on, I know that it's, it's not the power company. <laughs> Something's wrong between the power company and my house. Therefore, if I'm believing and praying and, 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 is, and the light isn't coming on, what I want isn't manifested. It has nothing to do with the power company. The, God is the power company. You follow me? So let's go to Mark chapter 4, 35 to 31. It says, On the same day when evening had come, he, Jesus, said to them, What did Jesus say to them. Let us cross over to the other side. What did Jesus say? Let us cross over to the other side. That's what Jesus said. So let's see what Jesus does now. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. What did he say? Let us cross over to the other side. Windstorm came. What was he doing? Sleeping in the midst of a windstorm. That the boat is filling up. And they awoke him. And said to him. Teacher. Do you not care that we are perishing? That we are dying? Remember these are fishermen. So they know what a windstorm and a sea storm looks like. And they, as far as they're concerned. We're going to die. We're all going to die. Jesus, don't you care that we're all going to die? Then he went, oh, oh, good Lord Jesus. Oh. <laughs> then he arose and rebuilt the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly. But this was a different type of fear now. And they said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Jesus said that the works that I do, they that believe in me shall do 
those works also. But listen to what he says. He says, why are you so fearful? Why are you full of fear? In other words, you have no reason to be fearful. And why don't they, did they have no reason to be fearful? Because he what? Said, let us cross to the other side. If they had believed what he said, they would have not been fearful. And that's why you get fearful. The reason why you get fearful is because you're not fully persuaded of what he said. And when he said, how is it that you have no faith? He wasn't saying that they had no faith. What he was saying is, how is it that you have no faith in what I said? You had no faith in what I said. It always comes down to what God said. And that's what you've got to reiterate. When Shelly was coughing and and wrenching and 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 sound like she was gonna die and the thought comes why don't you go upstairs and check to see if she's still breathing but God said by his wound she was healed God said I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. God said, you shall lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. I've laid my hands on my wife and she shall recover. There's no need for me to go upstairs and check on her if she's still breathing because she's still breathing because she's healed. I prayed for her. She's healed. Because of what God what? Said. The matter of this pain in my body. God said, surely he took our sicknesses and carried our pain. And by his wounds, we were healed. He's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it and shall he not do it? Has he not spoken and shall he not bring it to pass? Yes, the storms come. Yes, the wind blows. Yes, it feels like you're going to die. You feel like you're dying. And yes, it seems like if you want to say to God, God, don't you care that we're dying? Don't you care that I'm dying? Don't you care that I'm struggling financially? Don't you care that I'm anxious? Don't you care that I'm oppressed, depressed? Don't you care? And he's saying, why are you fearful? We've been given exceedingly great and precious promises that by these we would be partakers of the divine nature. There are many that could not live the life I live. Why? Because they haven't put the word of God in. It's not because I'm special. But things happen continually where I have to just trust God. He said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. And I remember one morning I got up and I just heard these words. God shall supply all your needs. That's his word. Even if I never heard that, that's his word. And therefore, there are times, and I can only use my wife as an example because we live together, right? But there, there are times, I mean, her job is to deal with the finances, with the things, and, and she will say, well, this is what the things look like, and, well, how are we going to do it? And I, I, will, I will say to her, it's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be fine. And things work out. Things work out. 
And the reason why I am confident of that is because God cannot lie. I'm not, I, I have no secret. I don't have a secret. God cannot lie. Does fear try to come? Sure it comes. Like I said, listen, see if, her, see if her chest is moving. I made a decision. I, there, there was one day as, as I closed. Um, so Ecclesia went out and I and I don't get up in the night to check. I go to sleep. But I got up and I was not informed that she was not coming home that night. I wasn't informed. <laughs> so I got up I looked out the window no car no car you know what the spirit of fear wants to do <laughs> you know what the spirit of fear wants to do But I didn't call her. I just simply said to my wife, oh, what did I say? I just said, where's Ecclesia? I just asked her, where's, where's Ecclesia? I didn't freak out. I didn't flip out. I just, oh, she, oh, she's sleeping out. I said, great. It's like, right? She's sleeping out. I'm like, okay, it'd be nice if you'd have told me. <laughs> But the point of the matter is this. I had to make a decision that I wasn't going to freak out. I wasn't going to flip out because I've already prayed. And I already declared certain things over my children. So I'm not going to freak out. And the, the reason I can do that, again, is because of laying up the word of God in my heart. And the fact that God cannot lie. And if it, and if it doesn't work, it's not his problem. There's somebody, something on my side. Are you following me? And so if you're going to not be fearful, you've got to, one, realize the spirit of fear is not from God. Two, God cannot lie lie. Three, if he said it, it is done. And four, you've got to do what he does, which is what? Notice he got up and he spoke to the wind and he spoke to the sea. You got to speak to the storm. You got to speak to the storm. Because if you don't speak to the storm, you're going to worry about the storm. Say that again. If you don't speak to the storm, you're going to worry about the storm. And Jesus didn't get up to worry about the storm. He got up and showed them what they should have done about the storm. Storm, you're not going to stop us from going to the other side because Jesus said we're crossing over to the other side. And since Jesus said we're crossing to the other side, come hell, high water, storm, hurricane, typhoon, tornado, it doesn't matter what's coming because Jesus said we're crossing to the other side. It doesn't matter. All oh, hell can break loose. There can be an uh, 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 earthquake or whatever you want. We're getting it to the other side. It doesn't, I don't know how we're getting to the other side, but we got to get to the other side. Whatever has to happen, we got to get to the other side. Even if it means going through the storm, 
we're getting to the other side. And sometimes you do go through the storm. But know that you're going to get to the other side. It might be rocky. You might get sick because it's so rocky. You may even feel like you're going to die. But you're going to get to the other side. But instead of being at the point of death, stand up and look at the storm and speak to it. And say, peace, be still. Speak to it. And say, storm, you're not killing me. No, no, no. Not today, not tomorrow, not next week, nor from a year from now. You need to speak to the storm. And, and that's the problem. Many of us endure it rather than speak to it. It's time to bring an end to fearfulness. Why are you fearful? How is it that you have no faith in what I said? Fear is not from God. Fear gives place to the devil. God cannot lie. He cannot lie. He cannot. I always said this. He cannot lie. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, almighty God. We praise you, Master. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Can we have the music on, please? Praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Marcia, this word is for you. This word is for you. God is saying, don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. God doesn't lie. But you've got to trust him. You've got to take him at his word. You've got to trust him and you've got to take him at his word. And your situation will work out. But you've got to trust him. Take him at his word and trust. Trust him. Trust him. You need to thank God for favor. That's what just came into my heart. You need favor. That's what you need. You need favor. And you need to thank God that you have favor. You need to get up. Father, I thank you. Have favor. You go through the day. Lord, thank you. I am favored. You need favor. In this season, you need favor. You need the favor of God manifested in your life in a big way. You need the favor of God. And God is saying that his favor is available for you. But you need to thank him you're favored. God says thank him that you're favored. And even when you get bad news, when, when it seems bad news, that, that it seems like a door is shut, that a door is shut, that you, you're going to this door and the door is shut, you need to say, Lord, I thank you. I am favored. I am favored and favored and favored and favored. And no matter how many doors get shut in your faith, don't give up. 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 Because there, that door, the door, the, the door that God opens, no one can shut. Man cannot shut the door to your inheritance. And you need to declare that. That man cannot shut the door to your inheritance. God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I won't abandon you. 
but you have got to make sure that you don't do what the disciples did. They got fearful. God said, I'll supply all your need. Not according to what's in your bank account, but favor. God says, thank him for favor. Psalms 512. That's got to be your, in this season of your life, Psalms says, God has blessed his people and he surrounds you with favor as a shield. Favor is your protection. Favor is going to keep your mind. As you're laying on the bed and you, worry wants to come. Worry. When you lay in bed, worry, you, you're thinking, worry, wor how, worry. You need to know that my God has supplied all your need. And he supplied you with the favor you need. And you need to thank God you have the favor. And you need to thank God you came tonight. <laughs> but God says you are favored. You need to declare your favorite. You need to thank God your favorite. And don't take no for an answer. Don't take no for an answer. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can be who you are. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you desire prayer, please come. If, 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 if you're, you're free to leave, if you so desire. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus.